Sorry, what were you doing there two seconds ago? Nothing at all. <laughs> shaving, shaving the spot you missed in the car? Yep. <laughs> Eating a licorice stick like you're a thousand and ten years old? This makes me look like, like a woodsman. I'm a lumberjack. In your, in your shirt about haikus? In my shirt about haikus. Bless your sweetheart. It's another weekend vlog edition of vlogs. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna let you try that one again. No, I like that. So it's, that's how it stays. A no, you gotta have like a cooler title. A cooler title? Yes. HCC. A weekend of vlogs. Like that's. It's so plain. it's a weekend of books and wonder. Anyway, we're going. I'm basically we're books going up to wonder. a cottage. We're going to a cottage because tomorrow I have a. Blah, 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 blah. Tomorrow I have an event with HCC Frenzy, HarperCollins Canada Teen Division, called Frenzy, and so I get to go make meet book people. And so today we're driving up to the cottage nearby. I don't know where it is. Please drive what even to is a cottage? Route. Please drive to the highlighted route. But yeah, that's where we're going today, and I'm just gonna take some clips. Possibly this weekend. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure how much I approve of books and dreams as our, our vlog title. I want something more weird. Halloween-y maybe. Book a book a palooza. Two K eighteen. No, like I want like like a running title for like like you know, at the you know, Jen and Julian podcast. They've got like a title. It's simple, but it's their title. What's our title? Our adventures are odd. My, I don't, I don't. Our adventures are odd. Vlog. <laughs> that vlog, that's, that's just mwah, so much better. We need to start a podcast. What do we talk about in this podcast? Anything we want to talk about. I mean, that is the majority of podcasts, but you need to- Rubik's a Cubes is- Yeah, stay tuned for my riveting podcast, Rubik's Cubes with Jeff. <laughs> Adventures are odd podcast. We're working on it. Yeah. It's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it. It is a raining, and on the way here, we passed by a rib fest. No, we did not go to the rib fest. And I'm fucking hungry, and I'm pretty upset about it. So, there's that. <laughs> They're all the same thing, Jeff, so it's all one channel. Is it though? <laughs> yeah. Dad. Oh, now you broke it. <laughs> well, let's see if they had other channels. Give me a break. <laughs> well, we found a 50s diner. It's pretty 50s cute. Diner. It's fairly charming, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Very into it. And this is a true test of Canadian diners. This is um, Grandpa John approved right here. So you gotta show uh, showcase the, the ones that I made. Yeah, we made these. These were our wedding gifts, or, or our, yeah, our little like take home gifts from our wedding. Um, wedding favors. Wedding. Thank you. Wedding favors. <laughs> yes. Is that the yeah. word you were looking for? Yeah. So um, these have a special place in my heart. So. I didn't get one peg, but I got three. <laughs> so it's just our I don't know where it went. Whatever. <laughs> the fish and chips look humongous. Root beer float. It's a root beer float. 
I pretended to sip it. I didn't actually. I just held it. It would be magic. McDonald's in the morning. Yep. Mickey D's. True. True. <laughs> Oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah. You're my stuff holder, by the way. Oh, shit. Oh, cool. Sure there. Yeah. Here now. I'm still talking about air conditioners. <laughs> About air conditioners. Oh, church. I'm gonna go find people I know and network. Maybe. I don't know what I should be doing or who I should be talking to. <laughs> It's like this. E is like that. You got an E. A little too close to West Side? Sex. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm like Paris. Doing the K in the mirror. <laughs> Alright, what am I doing now? I feel like white chest. And taking pictures. It's filming too. Great. No way. Excellent. Sex. So stupid. Where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. Let's go to. Ah! Okay, so driving along, I'm dozing off. Bra was taken off like hours ago, so my titties are just fucking flopping around. Yeah, we finished the event, by the way. We didn't, I don't think I vlogged the ending of that, but got a bunch of arcs, met some people. It was fun. I'm driving the five hours home down the 401, and I'm kind of like dozing off listening to like yeah, we're podcast. About... Way there. It's probably only gonna be like three and a half to four hours. It's gonna be another three and a half, four hours. What's that? Gonna be another three hours. Uh, I'm saying the drive is probably only gonna be like three and a half to four hours because I've been <laughs> trucking. Yeah, we're tracking on the 401, like we're fucking flying uh, safely ish. But anyway, kind of dozing off listening to podcasts about murder and just like the Big Apple. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and so now we're at, we can't see it anywhere. I don't think it's, anyway, we're at the Big Apple. If you guys have seen my other vlogs, where did we go? I don't know where we went. Niagara Falls, maybe? Anyway, yeah. Big Apple is this Big Apple on the side of the road, and they like. Not sell. the Big Apple, like New York City, like literally a Big Apple. A Big Apple. And they have apple pies. This place has been here for like fucking for years. Her, yeah. They've sold over a million apple pies. Uh, there's goats over there. Apparently, I can get a turkey leg, which is like fucking yes. So oh. we're making a definite Big Apple pit stop. So. Kind of half. It's on the 401. It's like the major route that connects like several major cities yeah uh, it, it, and notably Ottawa and Toronto with, with that five yeah. hour difference so it's like a perfect stop along the way to get like an apple pie and some cider man I want a turkey leg job it's gonna happen and a turkey leg apparently oh hello friend yeah he keeps bleeding he's just like oh wait come back <laughs> back Hey guys, 
so I'm back from the Frenzy event. I'm just gonna go over um, the books that I acquired over the weekend, kind of tell you guys how the event went. Um, basically, they invited us all in. We were given um, two books by the author that was there. The sun is doing its thing in this video, so I apologize. But the author that was there was Lori Forrest, uh, the author of The Black Witch. I've heard very interesting things about this both positive and negative. People either really like it, really hate it. There's a lot of like polarizing views on this. Um, but she was there, uh, did a little bit of a talk, answer some questions. I did ask a few questions to her in regards to uh, like what it means to be a writer, like um, did you set any sort of word goal, that kind of thing. So, you know, because like these are big books. Um, I feel like she sort of like somewhat answered those for me, but um, I had never read her first book and they gave us the arc of the second and so that comes out on September 18th soon enough. Um, I'm gonna try try to get to one of these in September um, because I know that this one comes out. I don't really think that these are gonna be my jam. I know these are like fantasy books. I'm gonna give them a shot though so um, yeah, I feel bad, like, you know, going to an event, getting them signed, and I know that it's not, like, my preferred genre. Um, but she did sign both of them. Um, not to me, just put her signature in them. So if ever I wanted to give these to somebody um, for a gift who I think is going to like them more than I would, I'm sort of, like, free to do that, you know? But I'll give them a shot, so there's that. Uh, during the event, they pulled up all the different books coming out um, basically before... December, I would say probably like the couple from like October to November, um, different ones that are coming out, a little bit about them. I was definitely taking some notes in a little like notebook they gave us um, about what books I'm excited for. Then at the end of the event, they gave us swag bags and included like some pins, a uh, little candle, face mask, um, that sort of stuff. And then also in each bag, it was a random three arcs of the ones that they talked about. Um, so it was kind of like a little bit of a, uh, like a mystery thing, which ones you were going to get. And they strongly encouraged trading with other people to get ones uh, that you might be interested in. As I said, I told Jeff, I'm like, don't grab a bag. Like, this is just for me. Like, this is, you, you were not invited. Like, be. But he ended up at the end of the event, there were a bunch of leftover bags. And so he asked them then if he could take one. Um, I'm not suggesting that other people do that necessarily. I was kind of like, buddy, that's on you. Um, so that's kind of how I ended up with six arcs instead of three. Um, do I feel kind of bad about that? A little bit, but <laughs> at the same time, he went and asked. It wasn't me, and they're like, yeah, go for it. So, <laughs> okay. These are some that I would have requested anyway through uh, Frenzy and hopes to get like sent um, uh, through the mail, so I don't feel that bad about it. i talk to you guys about the arcs that I did get because I got pretty much ones that I'm very interested in, a couple that I hadn't heard of before. So the first one is Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. Um, this one is an art coming out in October and this follows um, some teenage girls. One of their friends has been murdered and they're trying to figure out who did it. They're getting blamed for it. The only thing is that they didn't do it. Um, I believe that this has a little bit of like a speculative uh, twist to it. Maybe perhaps like a fantasy element um, and like just sort of a suspenseful novel. This was one that I really wanted and I really wanted when we went to BookCon and I couldn't get a hold of it then so I was really happy to find this one in my bag. So yeah, so this one's definitely obviously we're gonna get read before October. The next one I'm thrilled about again was one that I wanted for BookCon, didn't get my hands on. Um, that is A Very Large Expansive Sea by Tahara Mafi. This again, ARC copy. Um, this is also coming out in October 2018. So this follows the character after 9-11, dealing with what that means for her race, her religion, the fact that she wears a hijab, and um, dealing with all of the aftermath that came from uh, 9-11 and what that means to a lot of people and what it means to her. Um, I fully expect to cry during this and I just I wanted a hard-hitting contemporary and um, this is one that I was gonna go buy the second it comes out because I like darker diverse hard-hitting uh, YA books and so um, 
I was very excited to get this one. I also loved Har Mafi. I was in front of her at BookCon. She is absolutely beautiful, like stunning in person. We were all very intimidated by her and she is gorgeous. Next is an arc that they talked about at the event and when I realized what it was about, I was like, yes, please sign me up for that. Um, that is Pulp by Robin Talley and this is Oh man, this sounds so fun. This is like a dual perspective, like narrative of um, a woman who in 1955 is a lesbian and what that means for her and like she writes a note and I think people find out that she's a lesbian, which is, you know, obviously wasn't highly talked about at that time. Follows another girl 62 years later learning, I think, about the first character and what that means. And she started studying like 1950s lesbian pulp fiction and then finds out about the original character. I don't know. I don't know how it overlaps, but yeah, I don't know too much more about that, but it was like lesbian, dual perspective, sign me up. I think include that in my contemporary thon TBR as my um, diverse read, I think. Because like really a lot of them are diverse and a lot of them are dark, so um, we'll see what my contemporary TBR ends up being. Is The Light Between World by Laura E. Weymouth and this is another fantasy book but it was described as what happens when you step out of Narnia. Um, I have a feeling that this has very much like down among the sticks and bones kind of vibe of like what happens when you've already been in a fantastical world. Um, again I'm not a huge fantasy fantastical element reader however this one sounds really good and this the cover not not this cover but the cover that they showed us was stunning. It says in the back that this is a YA debut uh, perfect for fans of The Hazelwood and The Magicians. Now I medium like The Hazelwood so um, it'd be interesting if I read this and find out if I like it more or less than The Hazelwood because like I like an odd fantasy thrown in there but it has to be something that catches my attention and this one does like it's just sort of like Arctic Narnia kind of vibes and so um, yeah, I'll get to this one. Um, this one comes out again in October as well. I have a feeling Julie would really like this, so um, in the event that I don't like, like, like it myself, if she's not already reading this, I feel like I might send it to her. It is When We Caught Fire by Anna Godberson. Godberson? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, this is a historical fiction. Again, not all of them that I have in here are contemporaries, but all ones that when the team pitched them to us, I was like, I want to read that. It's a historical fiction following a love triangle um, between three people that result in the Chicago's like Great Fire. Um, so it's set in you know like the 1800s and whatnot and um, she apparently wrote another series that has like very beautiful um, like I don't want to say flowery but like lovely writing and so um, when they described it like you're really gonna like the sort of like writing style of this I was like yeah, okay. And then the last art that I got is The Color of Lies by C.J. Lyons, or Leons. Um, this one was, wasn't was actually talked about, and so when I opened it, I was like, what is this? And I read the back and was like, yeah, okay, I want this. Um, it says, high school senior has always been good at reading people. Her family had the medical, medical condition called synesthesia that scrambles the senses. Um, Graham Helen sees every sound. Uncle Joe can literally taste words. Her own synesthesia manifests itself in the ability to see colors that reveal people's true emotions until she meets a guy that she just can't read. Um, but then there's also like a mystery element to it so I'm not gonna read too much about it because I don't want to like I don't know it seems like to really give a whole lot in the back and that's not really how I like to read books I like to know not too much about them. The mystery element and I think she uses her sort of like synesthesia kind of powers or whatever to um to find out like what the mystery is and who like a killer possibly is uh so yeah this sounds completely up my alley i hope that it's like a mix of contemporary with a little bit of like that element because that's kind of shit i've been really liking like any sort of like sean david hutchinson style books where it's contemporary but then there's just that like other little spicy element but yeah so those are the books that i picked up at the frenzy event i just drop them all on the floor. That's that's great. It was definitely a really fun weekend. Worth it for me to um, make the five hour trek there and back. We went up to the cottage beforehand as you sort of maybe saw. I feel like I didn't vlog at all for the weekend and then um, I wish I could have stayed longer in the city and had like dinner with people and stuff but like we had to leave at four o'clock, drive five hours back to Ottawa. Um, so possibly if there's another event and I get invited to it I would love to um, meet up for coffee with some people beforehand and maybe go for 
like a nice dinner afterwards um, so I'm looking at Julia J and Zoe for that if you guys want to do that plus anyone else who might want to do that um, if there's another event soon like this little glimpse into a fun event um, let me know in the comments down below which of these arcs you guys are excited for I want to try to read all of them before release date um, I don't get very many arcs this is the most arcs that I've gotten <laughs> like really ever I've only really read three arcs before in my whole booktube career so the fact that I have like six seven of them now um is a lot all at once but I'm gonna try to read them before release date let you guys know my opinions on all of them so you can check them out do let me know in the comments down below which ones you think I should read first and um I'll try to get to them so yeah I do hope you guys like this video and until my next one I will talk to all you soon bye